Krishna Conscious Corner. As you already know, I am Kanchan. And I am Mukunda. And you already know that we have this beautiful background behind us. But do you know what these are? Do you know what these books are for? Do you know why they are important? Do you know what's in them? Probably not. And that's why... We are here today to tell you what, what these books are and a little bit about them. So there are we have a few um, we have actually a lot of books. So there are some replicates too. There are Bhagavad Gita, lots of Bhagavad Gitas. We have the Srimad Bhagavatam here. We have the Chaitanya Bhagavat here. We have the Chaitanya Charitamrit here, and we have a few small small books, but very important. Yeah. And these all books uh, um, come under the Iskon branch kind of. Yeah. So they are they are all by Shila Prabhupad. Uh, commented by Srila Prabhupada or um, something related uh, by Srila Prabhupada. Yes. So we are going to start off by uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srimad Bhagavatam is the... This is the first canto. In the first canto, um, this the first canto is actually, if we see, the, uh, the whole Srimad Bhagavatam is actually the body parts of Krishna itself. So the first canto is the feet. The feet of the Krishna. The lotus feet. Yes. Most of the cantos, actually, in almost all the cantos, there is, there some, is some kind of important thing, like very, a prayer, very important. prayer or something. So in the first, uh, the first canto, there is uh, in chapter eight there is Kunti prayers, and in chapter nine the prayers by Bhishma Dev. So that was the first canto. Moving on. To the second canto. This is what the second canto looks like. And this is the and second feet. Second feet foot. of Krishna. Second foot of Krishna. A very beautiful picture. It looks like Juhu temples. Picture, uh, Radha, uh, Radha Krishna. And yeah. in, uh, in, in, in this second one. Chap- uh, canto, in, in the second canto. We have the Chatur nine, Shloki Bhagavatam. Chapter 9. Chapter 9. Text 32, 32 33, 34 and 35. 35. So those are the four shlokas. Which uh, Krishna, which uh, Krishna, Krishna had said to Lord Brahma, and then uh, because you know, um, before the people were like really intelligent, so Krishna said these four verses, and Bra- uh, Lord Brahma understood it. The whole Bhagavad. Yeah, and that's and actually these are the four verses, which are actually the whole entire Bhagavatam yes. that Krishna told to Brahma. But Lord Brahma, but now it became more because we need like because we have lower we, intelligence because, and because, we need yeah, more because we don't we don't have as uh, much uh, intelligence like Lord Brahma, so um, so uh, the, it's actually how it comes down. So Krishna said it to Brahma, just the four verses that are in here for uh, in a Canto to Chapter Nine, te- the four verses. Uh, but then Brahma ji then told it to Narad Muni, and here yeah, maybe he got a little more explanation. And then Narad Muni told it to Vyasadev. Vyasadev, maybe he got a little more in, uh, more information. Then uh, Vyasadev told it to his son, Sukadev Goswami. So, and, uh, and then it the comes down. Disciplic succession. Yeah, that's how it comes down. It, there, are, there are many more people in there. And that's the, they go little more, little more, little more. But and now it's no more. Uh, uh, now it's just this. And there's so many. So basically, the four shlokas that are in here are actually expanded to so many uh, books. So the and Chatur Shloki Bhagavatam is in here. And also on the back picture is actually Krishna um, giving knowledge to um, Lord Brahma. Yes. Or knowledge or like um, some, like like that. And then this is the third canto, part this is one. Third canto, part one. And this is actually one of the thai. And the fourth canto is the second thai. But fourth, can- the third canto has two books, and the fourth canto has two books. So it's just it, instead of having a fat book, they just divided into two, two more thin books. So this is the part one of the third canto, and uh, this is the thai. And the prayers in this are by the unborn child. So, uh, uh, the, and uh, it is uh, Kapila Dev's instruction to Devahuti. So, just a quick thing. So, in this canto, Devahuti gets instructed by her own son, which is Kapila Dev, which is actually an incarnation uh, of a form of Krishna. And she gets instructed, and um, Kapila Dev also says one 
what a like when the child is in the womb of its mother then what what prayers it offers to the lord so that this is uh, canto 3 chapter uh, part 2 yeah and uh, this is uh, it's just one canto it's just the same thing and uh, obviously the same thing that uh, so then when uh, when the when uh, kapila dev is giving instruction to devahuti um then he talks about how a child uh, uh, prays to krishna that oh krishna please get me out of here because it's like uh, a kind of um, not so good condition when you're in the womb so uh, yes, get me out of here get me out of here but then uh, and the, the those prayers are in the third canto now moving on to the fourth canto fourth canto again there are two parts this is the fourth canto and it is um, actually the um the the second thai second thai of krishna and the prayers in here are by druva maharaj so in the first part there is um, all about druva maharaj and in the second part there's all about uh, prithu maharaj so in this the prayers are from druva maharaj druva maharaj how druva maharaj got um, got to see lord vishnu so those prayers are in here and the same and for fourth canto part 2 part 2 same thing this one and now next up is fifth canto next up is fifth canto and in and this is uh, the navel of lord krishna yeah so from um, just to explain a little more the, like the navel you must have seen lord vishnu has a navel and then there's like a lotus stem coming out and then uh, there's a lord brahma ji sitting on that yeah and lord brahma will be sitting on that doing his yeah so that's tapas. that's the navel so this is the navel so body part this is the navel in this there is no major prayers so now we'll be moving on to the sixth canto sixth canto is this one sixth canto is the chest of lord krishna so if in a body part if somebody asks you now you know that the sixth canto is the chest of lord krishna the major prayer is by Uh, vritra sura vritra sura so in the sixth canto we have prayers by vritra sura now we'll be moving on to canto 7 and in seven actually this is a very big canto um as you can see in the picture you can see that it's actually nursing the wait no no that's ranya kashipu and that's uh, prahlad and they're being tortured by him Yes so he is uh, pushing away Prahlad Maharaj yeah and, and then this is, uh, in the back you can see that the Narsimha Dev uh, has uh, um, cut open uh, Hiranyakashipu's stomach so in this uh, yeah, now you got so many hints so you know that the major prayer in this is by Prahlad Maharaj Prahlad Maharaj to Narsimha Dev to Narsimha Dev because Prahlad Maharaj was the only one who could pacify Narsimha Dev after, after Narsimha Dev had because Narsimha Dev was killing everyone that's why Now moving on to the eighth canto. Eighth canto is has one major prayer. Oh, major. also seventh canto is uh, one of the arms of Krishna, Lord Krishna. Yeah. And eighth canto is the second, second arm, of, arm of Lord Krishna. The major so, uh, prayer in this canto is Gajendra prayers. Gajendra prayers or pray, Gajen Gajendra Moksham Gajendra prayers. Gajendra uh, prayers of Gajendra to Lord Krishna. So if you know the Gajendra and uh, the elephant and the crocodile. um they had a fight for like 1000 years so in that he takes a, a lotus and then he uh, he calls out for lord vishnu so th- those those are in here and to be a little more specific um it's actually only some specific verses of that uh, chapter yeah, it's, which it's is not like chapter a whole three. it's just major major uh, prayers in there yeah so it is chapter 3 um text 2 to 29 yes Now moving on to chapter uh, ca- canto nine, canto. which is uh, the throat or the neck of Lord Krishna. Yeah. Chapter nine major uh, cha- uh, canto nine. There are no major prayers, but doesn't mean that it's not important. All the all the books and uh, actually of the whole Bhagavatam is important. Doesn't matter what Very canto important. it is. All of them are important. Ju- it's just that it doesn't have a major. Um, a major one. yeah and then now moving on to um the 10th canto there so are tenth four canto books four. so 10th canto has four parts and one uh, one part is um, on our order and this is 10th canto part 2 and this is actually this, this has lots of um like 
major players and all that. The tenth canto is basically the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Tenth canto, the whole tenth yeah. canto is the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Yeah. So from his birth to taking up to when he was in Dwaraka. So it goes uh, up to down. So then the tenth canto is actually his lotus face, his beautiful face that we see in his yeah. darshan. So it's that um, of Lord Krishna. And, and the te- one major one prayer is um, chapter two, tenth canto chapter two. So that will be that will the be the part first one. part. Um, it is the prayers of the demigods when Krishna uh, had entered into Devaki Mai's uh, womb. Yes. So when. Um, when he is going to come out, like before he was going to come out when he was in the womb. Yes. And uh, there before, are... Be, before he appeared. And then so another part... So now moving on to the third part of uh, ten, uh, the third part of uh, Canto 10. He, uh, he is a little... Uh, so, so he is a little bigger. He's not a child anymore. Uh, so this one is actually... In uh, part 1 or 2, uh, all these prayers will be covered. It is a prayers by Mani Greva and Nalukovera. Yes. And then um, chapter 14, 10th canto chapter 14. Actually, 10th canto has lots and lots of chapters, like yes. 90 or something. Yes. Something like that. So chapter 14, there's Brahm, uh, Brahma's prayers. So mm-hmm. you might not know, maybe you will know. And little Krishna, this is, um, well, yeah. So Brahma with Mohan Leela, when uh, Lord Brahma had... Um, come on his swan like his carrier yes and he had uh, picked up all the cowherd boys and went back and uh, one moment for him up there um, because their like time is um, how do i like bigger i think that's the word Mm -hmm. so like one moment up there equals one year on the earth so uh, as soon as Brahmaji put um, all the cowherd boys there he came down and then uh, he, uh, he saw that Krishna was playing with more cowherd boys which were actually the same thing and he, uh, were his expansions and uh, and then yeah he offers his prayer for forg- forgiveness yes then he re- so the, those are the prayers by Brahma yeah. uh, and uh, then we have in chapter, chapter 16, 16 we have prayers by wives of uh, Kalia so when Kalia was uh, almost being killed then uh, the wives of Kalia came and then uh, they were praying to Krishna. So those prayers are in here. Then we, if we move on, to, uh, then maybe in the chapter part 3 or part 4, we have songs by the gopis, which is uh, chapter 21 to 47. It's like somewhere in the middle. There are uh, around 5 songs by the gopis. And then we have, um, and then al- almost in the end, part, part 4, 4, part 4, also, um, one of the major things in here, as you can see on the picture, is also Sudama's pastime when he yes. goes to um, Dwaraka. Yes. So, in the 10th canto, um, around uh, chapter 4, uh, so, sorry, part 4, yeah. we have the, we have um, uh, ch- chapter 90, um, verse uh, 48, which is kind of the, so as, as we had uh, the Chatur Shroki Bhagavatam in the second canto, in the 10th canto, in the last part, in uh, chapter 90, 90, text 48, we have this one shloka, which is um, like the whole Bhagavatam. In Summarizing one. the whole um, Bhagavatam. Yeah, so it's like one, just one. Yes. So now and moving on to the 11th canto, part one. Okay. This is part one. And uh, this is the forehead of Lord Krishna. Yes. And um, tenth canto also ends the major prayers and all that. So there are not major prayers in eleventh canto or in twelfth canto. Or so, uh, also in eleventh canto has two parts. Two or, parts, yeah. yeah. So this is um, the and second this is canto. Part two. Yeah. Part two. It has a Lord Vishnu's pictures and a Lord Vishnu's pictures. Yeah. And, and I really need to explain one thing about twelfth canto. Um, so twelfth canto. Yeah. Is the so, head of Lord Krishna. Yeah, like here. And then the 11th canto was a forehead here. Forehead, yeah. And um, where, and the forehead where we put the luck. And then 12th canto, it is about um, some more instructions of uh, Sukadev Goswami. And Parikshit Maharaj al- also asks some questions. And Sukadev Goswami says one major thing. Was that in Kali Yuga, the only way how you can do devotional service and um, liberate yourself and serve Krishna 
is by Namasan Kirtan. Yes. Which is by chanting the Lord's name. So that we have many, many, many more books. But then if we now talk, now talk about all the books, then the video is going to be way, way, way long. So that's why we're going to stop here. And that was all for today's video. Be sure to watch our other videos in the part i button two. up there and in the description box down below. Whenever part 2 comes out, it will be in the description box below too. And don't forget to comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions. And your shout out word is... Srila Prabhupad Ki Jai! So you have to comment down below Srila Prabhupad Ki Jai if you want a shout out in our, in our next video. Today's shout out goes to... Arjun Gajay Prasad Prabhuji. So um, that's it for today's video. Be sure to give this like. video a big thumbs up. Um, share it with all of your friends and family members and any relatives. And subscribe to our channel, The Krishna Conscious Conscious Corner. Corner. That's it for today's video and we will see you in the next one. Hare Krishna!